So huge spoilers for the episode, and I'll be completely honest, I'm going to start this off a little bit more negative than I usually do with these episode reviews, but I'm not overly sure how I feel about the fifth episode because I didn't dislike it or anything, but I was a little disappointed how, I don't know, lazy I guess it felt at parts. And when I'm talking about lazy, I more so mean the constant scenes where characters are just aiming guns at each other's heads and threatening each other, everyone's giving speeches before killing other people. It just feels like a very plot armor heavy episode where there isn't really a sense of tension in a lot of scenes because you don't really feel like these characters were actually going to kill each other. I can count seven times that there was a scene where characters were holding guns to other people's heads or pointing guns at other people, threatening to kill them, then giving a speech which kind of conveniently stalls the scene so that the other side gets a chance to escape or to talk about something or the other characters get to talk somebody else out of it i'm not saying the main show didn't do this because they did you know the main show in season seven and eight did this a lot they had a lot of scenes where a lot of characters were having guns to their heads and then escaping even though it wasn't really believable but i don't remember a single episode of the main show doing it as much as it was done in this episode and it just felt a little lazy to me like i don't think there was a need for so many scenes where jadis was holding a gun at somebody and threatening to kill them if the writers had no intention of making there be anything legitimate to that because to me at least it sort of took the tension out of the scene i will say that i feel like the scene where jadis was holding a gun to gabriel's head was the one time here that I actually did feel some tension because I genuinely was thinking for a second like hold, hold on a minute are we gonna see Gabriel die because he doesn't have his own spin-off so that was pretty cool I also I do want to give props for them for keeping the Gabriel stuff a complete surprise like by the end of The Walking Dead he was easily one of the most interesting and most developed characters on that show and I always kind of wanted to see more of him and Aaron I loved how different both their characters were in season 11 in comparison to when they first appeared in season 5 I would love to see Gabriel again in episode 6 I feel like we might I don't know if you get him back for this episode if you have no intention of giving him a scene with either Rick or Michonne later on. So fingers crossed for that. But in general, the Rick and Michonne scenes were great. I loved everything about the two of them and the emotion especially surrounding the wedding ring and such was really well done. I also do really like the Jada's death scene and how that was done with Rick doing it, even if it felt like maybe it was dragged out a bit too much by having so many gun scenes beforehand. But in general, that was a really good death scene. I'm really interested to see how the final goes because it definitely to me feels like there's just no way they can satisfyingly wrap everything up in one episode if this is the last of this season. Like I think another season or follow up show or this carrying over to like Daryl Dixon might be necessary because we have to deal with the Echelon briefing, destroying the evidence, infiltrating Thorne, Beale, I assume something to do with Portland and the city in general then likely some kind of wrap up that will have some kind of reunion between characters and that's a lot to handle if this is just the final. There's also supposed to be something to do with the PPP cards from season 7 of the main show, whether that means seeing Heat as well or just an explanation about what it is, we'll see. But yeah, it's it's a lot. And um, I think, you know, if we go into the episode and they do wrap up the CRM, wrap up Beale, wrap up Thorn, wrap up all of this, it's going to feel a little bit disappointing because, you know, Beale especially and the CRM have been set up as this big antagonist so much and while World Beyond delved into the the CRM in general a lot it didn't feel like we've had them as a full-on villainous force yet and they haven't really been as much of a villainous force in this show just yet so I feel like we still need to get a season or get another show where they are full on the villains with Beale kind of spearheading an army against some characters that we're following whether that's Rick and Michonne or whether it's other characters back at the Commonwealth or Daryl or something like that I think to wrap them up so soon and so immediately would be a little bit of a waste. I also just think, you know, everything I just mentioned, if they try and do all of that in 50 minutes, it might not stick the landing. So I'm hoping at the end of the episode, it's clear where and how this story is continuing. While I'd love to see Rick and Michonne again, I'm not necessarily saying it has to be a season two or has to be a follow-up with those two characters, but I just want to know that Beale and the CRM especially story is going to be continuing. I don't want that to just be finished here. I feel like, you know, you're setting it up as the big end game for the Walking Dead universe. You should treat it as such. Because if we get rid of the CRM, where are we heading with this franchise? Like, what is the next thing we're heading towards? Because I feel like in these franchises, especially in something as long running as the Walking Dead franchise, you kind of do need an end goal. You kind of need something you're heading towards. Well, I don't think we're going to ever see like a cure or anything like that. The CRM is a pretty good end goal to have. So getting rid of that, clearing the slate, will maybe make the franchise feel a little bit more directionless than I'd want it to. But back to the episode, I thought the characterization of Rick was really interesting here. The scene where they first bump into the other survivors was very different to the Rick we remember from the main show. Like, if Rick from season 5 or season 6 bumped into those survivors and they pulled that move, he'd either kill them straight away or he'd do something that assures that they can't follow him and Michonne. Whereas here, he's straight away a lot more merciful, even more than he was in like early season 9. I wonder, does 
this all play into how mentally broken he is from the CRM and that he just doesn't really find a way to justify killing anymore. It also could be that in the main show, he always killed for the group. Like he always killed others when he saw it as assuring his people stay alive or when he saw another group that might be a threat to his people, he'd, he'd murder no matter what. To, to make sure they're safe. Here it's just him and Michonne, so there isn't really a justification there and a way to say killing these people protects Alexandria because it doesn't, like, killing them might protect Michonne, but Rick knows full well that Michonne can protect herself. But I also just kind of hated those characters that they bumped into, like, they just kept popping up and being a problem that maybe they should have died. But at the same time, that's not really what The Walking Dead is anymore, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that even in the later seasons of Fear the Walking Dead and what we've seen in Daryl and Dead City, all of the protagonists aren't really killers anymore. They make sure not to paint these characters in any kind of negative light. Whereas in the middle seasons of The Walking Dead, you can easily make the argument that Rick and our entire main cast are villains based off of what they do to others. Like, yeah, it's always in the defense of themselves, but some of the kills they take part in are hard to justify in terms of how cool they are. Like, one I like to point to is Officer Lamson in, or Lambden, or I'm not entirely sure. The, the guy who plays Sitwell in the Marvel films, that he, he played the cop in season five of the main show. He's completely wounded. Like, he's not a threat anymore. He was a threat, he's not anymore. Rick still executes him in kind of cold blood. Like, that's a little hard to justify. And none of the current shows really play into that. It's very much more of a, a morally right universe now, I guess, which again, isn't a bad thing, but I kind of do miss the days where it's less clear what is good and what is bad. When you think and talk about if these characters you've been following for years are in the right, or if maybe it's getting to the point where you, you can't just defend their actions anymore. That was always my favorite thing about the old show, how the characters developed in what felt like a very realistic way. Like the apocalypse was changing them and changing the morality. And I don't think it's a regression for them to be where they are now. Like it certainly makes sense in the context of what they've been through and I guess who they are. Like, you know, people are a resource. They're trying to make sure that they don't kill unless they have to. But it's like Rick here in some ways feels more like officer friendly from season one with sprinkles of season nine than anything from like the more feral eras of the main show. But the episode was still really solid. My main and honestly only detractor is the amount of gun aiming scenes with not a lot of tension, at least to me personally. I feel like the more times you aim a gun at characters without it being fired, the easier it is for the whole thing to just kind of lose weight a little bit. And it just did feel like that to me here, unfortunately. But everything else in the episode worked and played really well was really enjoyable for the most part. Seeing Gabriel was unexpected in the best way possible, and I do hope he starts to become a semi-regular over these shows. Excited for the final. I think it sets up a really exciting way to, for the show to go. I've generally steered clear of the episode promos for this season, but I watched them over the final, and it does look good. How do you feel about the ones who live episode five? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Are my complaints valid or wrong? Am I complaining too much? Am I complaining not enough? Let me know, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, and all of that, and I hope you have a great day.